Welcome to this episode of Fossils and Fiction, a podcast that explores the stories of prehistoric life, most often through the stories we humans tell about it. It's produced by me, Travis Holland, with support from Charles Sturt University. Enjoy. I've brought my good friend Tom Jurassic back uh, for something a little different. What we're going to do is record the episode, mostly one take, likely unedited, unless one of us swears or says something we're not meant to, in which case I'll have to chop it out. Um, Tom and I are going to take a little safari through a dinosaur theme park. We love dinosaur theme parks, don't we, Tom? We do. We love when they go wrong as well. We love when things exactly break right. out and the hybrids escape and cause chaos. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got blue here uh, to keep us company. One of them's well, already so. broken out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I'm not talking about Jurassic Park, but something that I gather is very much inspired by it, and it is a website called Prehistoric Domain. So once we access the site, we get a look at the park, and we get to pick what dinosaurs to visit. So, Tom, I'm going to share my screen with you, uh, and we can have a look at the Prehistoric oh, yeah. Domain site. Here it is. I'm going to turn their audio on as well. I think this is going to come on a bit loud, but we'll... Drop it back if needed to. Um, okay, so the audio button didn't work. That's not a good start. <laughs> <It was really laughs> fine before. <laughs> All good. So Tom, we're going to All go major theme the park. parks have delays, Travis. Yes, but they. Uh, if the Pirates of the Caribbean doesn't break breaks down, it doesn't eat the tourists. So. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, thanks so much for joining me. I've had a chat with the developers of this site and I hope to get them on at some point. Uh, awesome. So I'm really looking forward to, to that as well. But I think they're in France and uh, the, the time zone with France is even worse than it is for the, for yeah. the UK. So. <laughs> hey, let's, let's pick a, a dinosaur or a... Um, uh, a, a dinosaur-like creature in the case of Dimetrodon and Colossuchus. I think, yeah. To, to visit, what do you what do you like? We've got um, up here. We have Edmontosaurus. We have Deinonychus. We have Brachiosaurus. There's a T Rex, of course. There's Velociraptor. Uh, Quetzalcoatlus. Oh, it's got to be Quetzalcoatlus. Yeah. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Now I do know these take a little time to load. Um, as we chat. So I'm going to ask you some questions as we go. Tom, you've been yep. working on an audio drama set in the Jurassic World. Yes. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Tell my audience about Tales from a Jurassic World and you've got 42% of loading time. <laughs> okay. So Tales from a Jurassic World is a story that's set between the events of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and Jurassic World Dominion. And the idea was to really explore those different scenarios that people will be experiencing. Now dinosaurs are in the wild. Um, so the goal was really to think about that sort of dinosaur list that we see at the end of Fallen Kingdom at Lockwood Manor, think about what kind of scenarios those dinosaurs would now be caught up in, where members of the public might encounter them, um, and to really tell those stories, you know, I think that kind of period of time in the Jurassic universe is the most tangible for more storytelling in general, so it's been a lot of fun to explore that and sort of create cool scenarios. Awesome. We we might have to come back to that because uh, it has been a great piece. As we're speaking, I think you've put out three episodes or four. Uh, yeah, and so episode four comes, is so. out and episode five has just landed in my inbox. How exciting. All right, let's yeah. go in and visit the cats. Now, we should get a little bit of commentary here as this loads up. Um, and then we get dropped in there. I've, I've seen some of these creatures, obviously, but I haven't, uh, I haven't seen most of them. So we should get a bit of commentary, then we get dropped in. Quetzalcoatlus is one of the largest known flying animals of all time. Quetzalcoatlus is a member of the family Ashdarkidae, a family of advanced toothless pterosaurs with unusually long, stiffened necks. All right. So... Cool. Um, now the site is VR optimized, which is really cool. We're obviously just using a desktop, but you get these little viewing galleries, which are quite nice. And you click 
you just click and you can move around with arrow keys as well. So we can move to the edge of the viewing gallery. Don't touch the glass, Tom. Don't <laughs> upset the Quetzalcoatlus. <laughs> oh no, I've touched it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's its nest. Now, what I really like about prehistoric domain is it's very naturalistic, right? And so sometimes that means nothing happens, but something's There's happening. There's a velociraptor or something similar in it's, this paddock. Yeah, it's a, some kind of medium-sized theropod. Perhaps a perhaps an overactor of some kind. Yeah, a bit big. I didn't expect to see him or her sneaking around. I wonder if we're about to see it get wiped out. <laughs> well, it's, it's sneaking towards the eggs here, by the look. It is. This is pretty cool. Hey, here we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> he runs away. Oh. <laughs> I love the mist on this. This is giving me major JP3 vibes. Yeah. The the notion which I've heard a few times that we should get like an as darked based horror uh for in the in the Jurassic World or Jurassic Park universe would be fantastic. I would love it. It would so. be really cool. Yeah. Oh, hopefully the cats is going to come in here. <laughs> here we go. Oh, le le wow. Oh, it's walking. Okay, that is massive. Oh, that's <laughs> so cool. <laughs> I love how that gives you the sense of scale of it. Oh wow. Yeah. And what? It's off. <laughs> I gotta wonder what kind of uh what kind of containment's going on here. It looks like some walls. Oh no, they're trees, aren't yeah. they? I thought there was walls in the background, but it's supposed to be trees. I so. wonder if they've just decided to let it fly loose, you know? <laughs> We're on an island. Where's it gonna go, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. All right, that's the cats. Let's go back to the park and find another find another exhibit to visit. Um, so they have different kind of biomes, which I really like. So you've got the yeah. ancient sands biome, the giant coasts biome, um, swamp things, <laughs> <laughs> and the valley of wonders. Um, it's a really cool island, a vague, a vague um, familiarity there, I think, with, with <laughs> Isla Nublar. So Is that a, lagoon in the middle of the island or in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't need to get into that debate. Now, is this a underwater Let's space? take a look at it. Go for it. Let's see what we can spot in an underwater space. So, Tom, tell me a bit more about Tales. What can people expect? Yeah. So um, we've got two episodes left to go. Um, episode five is going to be quite an emotional one. It's a bit of a tonal shift. Um, so it's mm -hmm. a lot slower paced. Um, and hopefully there might be a few tears in that episode. Um, and then episode six is kind of our grand finale. So it is going to be big. It's going to be bold. Um, and it follows on from the events of Battle at Big Rock. So I'm quite excited to share that because it's been a lot of fun imagining what happened after that short. Um, so yeah. expect the season to finish with an Allosaurus. Well, you've just given it away. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, you know, people want to be excited about dinosaurs. People want a yeah. large carnivore in the series. I've seen a comment that said that in the past. Finally going to get it with episode six. I'm uh, I'm planning to drop this episode probably sometime after your episode five drops, so people will have cool. an opportunity to to listen in. Okay, fantastic. Megalodon. Welcome yeah. to our underwater space. You will meet the largest shark that has ever existed, the megalodon. Its name corresponds to its huge teeth of seventeen centimeters. It was the most feared marine predator of the Miocene period, 28 million years ago. It could measure up to 20 meters. Our specimen is 18 meters. 
He is <laughs> undoubtedly a formidable predator capable of inflicting a bite of mad power. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it sounds like a... It sounds I'm like not a so sure I want to be in this Come glass on. dome. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a... I might have a look around what we see here. Um, I like oh, how the doors are super sci-fi. Mm. Yeah, the doors are super sci-fi. Some of them, it um, it looks like you're going on a train to get there. Yeah. Um, so we might we'll get to see some of those. The oh, it's full. It's fully open. This one. This is cool. There it is. Oh oh oh! I like the way they've done this with that kind of horror esque vibe of it being off screen initially. Ooh, what is that? A, wow. I think that's just a, a, a um, swordfish. Maybe it's <laughs> lunch. <laughs> lunch for the Meg. Or that might be speaking us. Speaking of which... <laughs> yeah. Uh, sp- speaking of which, the um, uh, Meg 2 is coming out yeah. soon, which is... Did have you seen have you seen the first one? I so I've got to be honest, and I feel really bad saying this because the author actually follows me on Twitter. I haven't seen the first one yet. I was really excited when it came out, and what happens a lot of the time with things is I'll get excited about things and want to watch it, and, and then I get really busy. Um, so yeah. I haven't, I just haven't made time to watch it, but I want to. Um, and equally, I need to finish the second half of Prehistoric Planet Season 1 so I can watch Season 2, because obviously that's out now. Yeah, Season 2 is out. Um, yeah. Prehistoric Planet is is amazing. Um, I've only watched, at this point, one one episode of, of Season 2 myself, but yeah. season, uh, season 1 was, was absolutely incredible, I, and I loved uh, the first episode of Season 2, so... yeah. I just think the production yeah. value on that show has been incredible. Like, I remember oh, the yeah. episode in season one where you had all of the baby pterosaurs um, and then, like, like jumping off of the cliff and doing their first flight and just the way that was animated was absolutely oh. awe-inspiring. Wow. <laughs> okay. I'm glad I <laughs> that was a bit of a jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um... Well, we, we, I should explain what's happening because this is primarily an audio medium, although I'm, I'm hoping to put the video on YouTube. But we just saw the Meg come in from uh, below below the view and essentially swallow this swordfish whole. <laughs> and I only yeah. just turned turned the camera just at the right moment to even to even capture it. Oh yeah, and she's cruising. Oh wow, she's cruising past now. What a beast! What a beast! I think I could take it on with a spear gun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um get yeah get out there amongst uh amongst the meg pack in 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 the meg 2 perhaps and see yeah. how you go tom <laughs> <laughs> where did tom jurassic go he was never seen again <laughs> <laughs> all right well that was that was pretty cool um yeah so we've had a flyer we've had a swimmer i think we might check out the demetrodons Yes, let's go for it. I love myself a Dimetrodon. Probably <laughs> my favourite addition to Jurassic World Dominion, actually. Yeah, they were super cool. I mm. had a Dimetrodon toy when I was a kid, and it was my favourite dinosaur toy. I know it's not a dinosaur, of course, but um, <laughs> <laughs> as a kid, I didn't. I don't think I knew that. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I, yeah, I absolutely, I love that little Demetra. I, I wondered the other day uh, if if it would still be at home, but I think that's probably unlikely. So you um, never know; it might be sat under a shelf somewhere. You know, like in the corner of a room. <laughs> yeah, the um. Uh, the Demetrodons in uh, I keep changing how I'm saying it, but <laughs> Demetrodon <laughs> in Dominion, uh, they they were, if I'm not mistaken, they were inspired by some art of Alan Grant battling a Demetrodon uh, that came out when Jurassic Park was released. Is that yeah? Have you yeah? You you might. Know I think more that's about something that. I've heard. Um, I. I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head, but I know that 
Colin Trevor used to be really in touch with a lot of the like extended media on Jurassic and he drew a lot of inspiration from that. Um, I I think there's so much detail in Dominion that that wouldn't surprise me. I mean, one one thing that's always stood out to me is when I did the interview with the set designer from Dominion, he said that the corridors in Biosyn's lab facility have got yellow stripes on the walls to represent the amber where everything started. So it would not surprise me if in a similar level there's a lot of um, detail and fall into the animal choices for the film as well. There was a lot of really cool world building in general in yeah. uh, in and around Biosyn, I thought, in, in that yeah. movie. Um, I loved the the look of the – I absolutely loved the look of their headquarters. Um, yeah. Or, or rather the, the HQ in the valley um, wasn't the main corporate headquarters, but it, it was a, a magnificent building and I – I really just want more detail about that building as a the kind of nerd yeah. that I am. Okay, Wouldn't it be cool in? if you were to get more of that in a future season of an audio drama, Travis? Ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I'd love a, I, this is, it's such a niche request, but I'd love a Lego set of, um, yeah. of that. Contrary to what is sometimes thought, Dimetrodon, or the species Dimetrodon grandis, that we see here. Oh, you can see them up it's on the a cliff. Dinosaur, but a reptile. Oh, yeah. This genus of reptile is close to the <gasps> ancestors of mammals and mammalian reptiles. The Dimetrodon is best known for its huge dorsal sail, which probably allowed it to regulate its body temperature by cooling <laughs> or warming its body, depending on how it is oriented with respect to the sun. It disappeared tens of millions of years before the appearance of the first Triassic dinosaurs. Until now. Yes, plus we get a little bonus of this uh, little reptile. Yeah. So one of my favourite things, I went to an exhibition at the Horniman Museum a few years ago, um, and it was focused on the era before dinosaurs, and the Permian Mm -hmm. era was a big focus of it. So they actually had a Dimetrodon skeleton on show, and it's one of the coolest dinosaur skeletons. Well, not dinosaurs. Oh boy. Um, one of the coolest like skeleton fossils that I've ever seen in person. Just the the length of the spines for the sail was incredible. Yeah. They they really are very extraordinary um animals and, and so uh so iconic. So this this is a um, maybe a salamander or it's a it's a yeah, it's probably a it's probably a Permian uh, a Permian era animal, um, very low to the ground and sort of crawling around uh, in this in this cliff valley, um, while we can see four Dimetrodon on the screen, but we can only see at the moment their sails. Oh, one at the back is having a little walk. I think um, oh, he's walking away. He's walking in the <laughs> wrong direction. <laughs> this this is so. Um, I really love that this is actually like a zoo. Yeah. <laughs> and so oh, wow. walks in from the left. Yeah. Um, very close up to the screen. Quite different color than we saw in the Dominion design. Oh, yeah. It's chasing the little. It's chasing the little salamander creature. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, a little bit of drama there. Um, so there's fifth, five Dimetrodons in total, and I was just going to say it's quite yeah. a different colour um, um, to what we saw in Dominion, which were the very red and orangey uh, styles. So yeah. these ones are um, um, bluey green uh, and, yeah. But they still kind of blend in with their Kenyan Mesa. They do. They could easily be mistaken for like rocks or boulders, which is quite cool. Yeah. Initially I I didn't realize how many were sort of sitting around there. Yeah. <laughs> Precisely because of that. So yeah. Um I wish we had some information on what that other little creature was. Yeah. Um that would be cool. Uh, Does it let you hover over it in the actual menu screen to see its name at least? Yeah, um, there is a listing of the animals, so I'm going to click to there, and we'll see if we can 
we can spot. Uh, and I think and they're they're building um, more all the time is the thing to note. So on the screen here, I can see the Allosaurus, uh, Dip Diplodocus yeah. or Diplodocus. Uh, uh, that was a Diplocaulus, I think, Tom. Cool. Yeah, it was. I think that yeah. little creature was a Diplocaulus. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So it's kind of a flat-headed amphibian uh, from the Permian period. Its name means double claw because it has a very distinctive head that resembles a boomerang. Yeah, so 50 centimetres high and one metre long, very sort of flat-headed, uh, almost yeah. like a hammerhead shark style, um, but Permian. Yeah. So there we go. That was a little bonus inside the <laughs> Demetrodon enclosure. Okay, now I think we need to see an actual dinosaur. <laughs> I think we need to do the T-Rex. Or do we, we want to, to save the T-Rex? Let's go. Let's, I, yeah, Brachiosaurus, and is it a trach with it? Yeah, actually, oh, yeah, they should be together, shouldn't they, by the look of that? Oh, Night Tour. This is exciting. Yeah. So <laughs> this is one of the ones that I did load up briefly, and then I clicked out of it because I didn't want to spoil it, but this one looks really cool. Yeah. Uh, vehicle is on its way to the Night Tour. I love the little train train that we get. yeah so tom um uh jurassic world lego sets are coming out very soon or very soon as, yes. as we record this uh are you excited i'm quite excited yeah i forgot how much money i was gonna have to spend this month so <laughs> that's never a great thing um but they look cool and it's awesome finally getting the jeep wranglers in an official set um because fun fact for you if you didn't know the dilophosaurus set back in 2015 was originally going to come with the Jurassic Park set that Zack and Grey used, um, and mm -hmm. then they changed it last minute to a Jurassic World coloured Jeep instead. So it's nice that we're finally getting the Wranglers so many years later. Yeah. the I, I'm, I mean, look, they're not the sets I would have ideally loved as a kind of Lego mm -hmm. Jurassic fan. Um, I really wanted a, a, a large and detailed display. Um, so this one is a moving moving vehicle, which is yeah. cool. So this is definitely feels very Jurassic Park esque. It's going down a long sort of metallic tunnel at the moment. The right. tunnel that Nedry should have gone down. Hello, I am the voice of prehistoric domain, and I will accompany you throughout the duration of the no night tour spared. attraction. Please make yourself comfortable <laughs> for your safety. Do not attempt to the voice you're now hearing is the Richard Kai. <laughs> we spared no the expense. Will allow you to observe the environment around you. The current time is eight o'clock. The weather is foggy. I will provide you with additional information during the visit. Welcome to prehistoric. That's pretty cool. Because, oh wow! Um, <laughs> yeah, that audio is, is the music even. Uh, I was going to say that he, he just said that it's 8 p.m. Uh, and I'm at 7.28 p.m. as we record this. So <laughs> I'm at 10.28 you... a.m. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's here in the so, UK. But... So one of us survived the night tour and one of us didn't. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> um, well, you obviously did. <laughs> um... <laughs> that raptor's getting closer. <laughs> yeah. I'm just waiting for for one of the security guards to come past and see the raptor in the window. In the window. <laughs> oh. Oh, what did I do? It's all right. You're looking around. Yeah. We are currently in the plains, composed entirely of free roaming herbivores. Free roaming herbivores. Animal welfare is a priority at prehistoric domain. All enclosures are perfectly suited. This is a fully self-driving vehicle. <laughs> There's no no driver. Um, we are the only passenger at the moment. I love Who the notion friends, of right? <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, it's it's really clever. Um, Can you imagine a night tour with the Dilophosaurus in Jurassic Park? Yeah. Be terrifying. I I agree with you. I love the fact that this is. So, so that looks like it could be the Brachiosaurus on the left? No? 
Our oh. cameras detect oh, no, the sword nearby. Oh. It is an adult Brachiosaurus <laughs> with a height of 12 meters and a weight of 42 tons. That, I didn't even see that. I thought the handle of the car was <laughs> like a leg. <laughs> oh, right. Yes. No, we're looking at uh, Brachiosaurus that is um, extremely tall, walking towards... This moment where it just tramples on the tall car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, its head's gone high as the roof of the car. Uh, that's really? really cool. I thought it was just missing its head at first. Yeah, no, it's just a dark, um, yeah, dark roof. And is that glass there. above us? If you look through, what's above us? Is that glass? It looks like it yes. is that like little bit. Yeah, it does. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They've, and they've gone all out on the sound effects here too, which I really love. But yeah. It's, it's really cool. What I really like about this is it's not actually a commercial, um, you know, there's not a game company behind this as far as I can tell. It's a group of enthusiasts who've put this website together. Um, yeah. And, and they've essentially just doing it out of, um, as, a, as a piece of fun, which I, you know, I absolutely love when people take their um take their interests like this and 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 do something really cool yeah do something yeah. really creative with them it's really awesome and i think it, it does show what could be done um by say franchises like jurassic park as well because can you imagine if we'd got a virtual park tour for the 30th anniversary that would have been really cool yeah you know, and even if it was a park tour of Jurassic World, um, I thought the the aspect of Jurassic World that was most well developed was the notion of the park. Yeah. Uh, in itself, it's a really cool park. <laughs> like, it's a park that you could spend time in. Brachiosaurus is one of the largest land animals that has ever existed. It's moving off into the darkness. <laughs> As the car moves on. Never to be seen again. <laughs> well, unless you come on the tour. Uh, yeah. Pay, pay park entry again and <laughs> come on the tour. <laughs> um, I have actually done this I'm one convinced before, these but, might be um, animatronics. So... The Brachiosaurus appears at the exact same moment in the tour. <laughs> <laughs> That would, yeah, that would be a shock, wouldn't it? Um, so, given that this the, is optimised for VR, the the mouse is a little jittery sometimes, so the camera yeah. kind of jerks around uh, when you're just trying to move nicely. So you were saying this was one of the ones that you'd done before. How many of yeah, the ones on the not, website have you done? Not long after it launched, I came and did a, a couple, yeah. um, and this was one of the ones. And uh, uh, then in the last few days, I, I came in and I actually had been into the Dimetrodon. It's a plant eater with yeah. specialized teeth for cutting and slicing, and a huge stomach for digesting. Oh, it's on the right hand side as well, I think. There's, there's, there's a three few of them. Of yeah. Predators like Tyrannosaurus. I like the reference to predators like Tyrannosaurus because, as we know, yeah. Trike versus T Rex is such an iconic pairing. And unlike Trike versus um, Stegosaurus, could have actually happened. Yeah. And and probably did happen um, at some point. There's, I think, there's an Allosaurus with um with uh, Triceratops sized hole in its shins. Yeah. Um. So that so there are three of them sitting around uh, this sort of fountain. <laughs> I love the weird. tiger stripe design. <laughs> yeah. Um, so out on the yeah, look at the stripes on this on this creature. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really vibrant. Mattel, if you're doing a Hammond collection repaint. <laughs> Um, oh wow I love how you're right that it captures the natural feel with the zoo by actually sometimes you go past animals that just aren't doing much yeah yeah they're, they're just sleeping or 
Look at the look at the colours on this one. I should click over to. I'm gonna. Uh, so we're swinging around the. Um, That's swing. cool. Huh? That one's more a traditional brown colour as well. Is he waking up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to take a look. I. Speaking of colours of Triceratops, there's a museum in Canberra, which is a few hours away from, from me. Um, yeah. It's a kind of private museum, uh, but their actual main attraction is this dinosaur garden, which is oh, wow. um, just all these, <laughs> all these like dinosaur figures. And, yeah. Um, they had a they had a black and white triceratops there last time I went there. Um, oh wow! I was like, wow, look at the colours on this thing. It was absurd. Um, but I've in Jurassic World Evolution, I've actually spent a fair bit of time trying to get a um, trying to get a sort of black and white striped dinosaur. Yeah, I know. God knows why, but I think that would be really that would be really cool. So. Frontier, we need a black and white stripes pack. Are we going to get... Oi, here we go, more tracks. Oh, this is cool. This is almost like that Dino Tracker video. Yeah, yeah. So we've got two of them facing off. Um, Off to the side of the road. Are we going to get a charge? That would be amazing. <laughs> I love how you are hyping this up for us when you fully know what's going to no, happen. No, I, I really don't. I, here we go. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a little bit of a charge there, which is cool. I actually don't. Yeah. I, I, I dropped out of this one early. Um, oh, cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had got to the fountain and, and then I stopped. I didn't know there were any on the way back. Um, and they might have added them. So they are they are adding and changing a bunch. That's so really that, cool. The one that charged is sort of being driven back now by the, uh, yeah. by the other one, which is really cool. Conveniently so, keeping it out of the way of the road for us. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this, Tom. This is the black and white. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really cool. That um, looks awesome. All right. Let's. I don't know that we'll, I don't know that we'll do all of these guys, but um, let's find at least, at least one or two more. So. Uh, I think we need to do the Velociraptor. Dionicus. Yeah, or there's the over in the mountains, I think. Although it doesn't look like you can click on it, actually. The one that's over to the right-hand side. Oh, Velociraptor. It's just there, but oh, we can't go and see just, it. No, no, oh, no, that's what, what was with the Quetzalcoatlus. It's what was, yes, it's what... It, so cool. you were right when you called it a Velociraptor in the first hey, place. Hey, look at that! <laughs> <laughs> I can claim more paleo knowledge than I actually have. <laughs> and me, who's actually studied paleontology. <laughs> <was wrong. laughs> That's cool, yeah. though. I like how they group that. Oh, Edmontosaurus is awesome. Edmontosaurus is awesome. One of the one of the OG hadrosaurs. Uh, so we might do Edmontosaurus and then and then T Rex. Tom, how yeah. are you celebrating the thirtieth anniversary of Jurassic Park? Yeah, so um, I'm hopefully going to go and see Jurassic Park outdoors with Connor Ontology, which will be awesome. Um, I'm going to go up to the museum at least one more time to see the 30th anniversary shop. Um, and then for me, it's been a really fun opportunity to learn a lot more about paleontology. So I have been working on a series with Everything Dinosaur, um, which we're debuting on Jurassic Collectibles, which talks about the seven dinosaurs in the original film mm -hmm. um, and their sort of accuracy to real paleontological knowledge. So it's been really cool doing that series and sort of learning more about animals and their behaviour as I've gone um, and learning how to pronounce a bunch of really complicated words as well. 
uh, as in the dinosaur names or so sort of like their um genuses and the orders they belong to those sorts of things yeah okay um something's happening with my recording by the way uh so but that's okay i have a backup so should be should be fine <laughs> <laughs> the park is descending into chaos yeah <laughs> Um, I really, what I really love about the novels of Jurassic Park is the way that Malcolm um, describes the things that are going wrong slowly. Yeah. Before you, you know, and you don't get that. Edmontosaurus is a genus of large herbivorous duck-billed dinosaurs. Oh wow! One of the largest hadrosaurids. It could move either on two or four legs. Edmontosaurus live and roam in small groups to large herds, consisting of up to thousands of members. In its time, Edmontosaurus would have massive migrations following the rains from north to south and back, traveling 600 miles in the process. Like its ancestors, the earlier Iguanodont dinosaurs, Edmontosaurus walk on all four legs, but it can run on its hind legs. So, um, the scene here is snow, and we have three large Edmontosaurus with with back spines, actually, which is really yeah. interesting choice, uh, laying around and having a having a nap in the snow. Um, it made me chuckle because it almost looked like initially we'd come into three dead bodies. <laughs> He's uh, one of them's waking up now. Oh wow! Drink. That's so cool. Oh, and another's come in from the side. So again, the colours are quite distinct. Uh, yeah. You've got two with kind of giraffe spots, I'd say, kind of a yeah, um, and two with with more stripy patterns. You know what? In fact, there's actually three with the giraffe spots. Um, I wonder if the one without them is the alpha. Yeah. I wonder if they've thought about it that deeply. <laughs> um, cool. Edmontosaurus is really cool. Uh, this is one of the largest harrogosaurs. It was a herbivore that could move on two or four legs. Edmontosaurus live and roam in small groups to large herds. So That's really awesome. I, the Edmontosaurus is one of the animals that always sticks out to me in Jurassic World Evolution 1 as well, because it's one of the first animals you can hatch. Um, and the design in that game was so cool. Yeah. T-Rex. Time for T-Rex time. Yeah. Time let's, for T-Rex. Let's get in there. I'm so yeah. up for this. You've actually reminded me about the Lego sets as well. So I've got a little tab open with the Lego shop. And I completely forgot that I've saved up about two years worth of VIP points. So yeah. I'm very happy right now. That's that's what you need, man. You need those you need those VIP points. A hundred percent. All right, so the T Rex is loading up now. Um hopefully the screen share Ooh. works as well, but I can't oh it's loading now. Yeah, I there think we it's go. Loading. Okay. So we're at sixty three percent for the team. This is exciting. We're climbing. <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to it. I better be in some kind of viewing log looking out at it. That's that's yep. the ideal outcome here. <laughs> All right. Here we go. It's... T-Rex, the queen of Nublar in Jurassic Park, but... The Tyrannosaurus... Oh. <laughs> 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 didn't quite work. Rex is an apex predator, one of the only apex predators in its area and time period. It hunts large hadrosaurs and ceratopsians with some of the most powerful jaws known to Earth. The name Tyrannosaurus Rex means king of the tyrant lizards. So... To describe the scene for those listening, uh, we have a kind of large open plain with meandering rivers, but nearer to nearer to the viewing gallery is a 
little bit of a forest. Um, that sounds like a T-Rex. Here she comes. Oh wow. From the left hand side. Oh they've got her really nice and beefy. Yeah. That might be the prehistoric planet influence. Um, yeah. I, you will have seen Hank, even if you haven't seen the rest of that series, Tom. Yes, yeah, yeah. I've seen him on the advertising material. Nice. And she wanders off. <laughs> and that, that's it. And that's it. I think that's a good way to end our tour of, um, I think so, of prehistoric yeah. domain. Yeah. That was awesome. What a cool website. And I can see this being so useful in like um, academic settings like you're in to actually give people a more tangible sense of these animals, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, oh, T-Rex is coming back, Tom. Oh. <laughs> We're going to have to... <laughs> <laughs> have to share again. Quick, quick! <laughs> Must go faster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can tell I've seen Jurassic Park too many times that I could just quit yeah. these lines up. <laughs> just quit it constantly. Oh, uh, I think I, I think you missed it. You're gonna have to go back in and watch that for yourself. So I will. I thought, just I will. as I was like, exiting out, the T Rex um, head came in from the top of the screen. Uh, oh wow! Well. And and kind of gave a little roar and then disappeared again. So, um, look, what I what I might do is I'll point out they they do have details about their um, they do have details about all their animals um, on here. Yeah, there's learning resources as well, uh, and they have a bit of a shop too. So, um, if people want to support the project, uh, I encourage you to buy some some of the merch that they've got on offer so they have details about what is a dinosaur a different look at the sort of the hadrosaurs and um details there as well which is really which is really handy um so. it's really awesome to have such a great resource that encourages awareness about um these animals i think it's yeah. so cool um and looking at their collection they do have some official jurassic park merchandise on it as well so there is that natural connection yeah, so I think they've tied up with a different shop, Mystery Dino. Yeah. Might be a different group of people, but there's um, – <laughs> I saw the Meg Classic T, the um, – uh, yeah, I'm going to have to buy some of these shirts now. Look, look what <laughs> – yeah, look at what look at what you've done, Travis. I'm on their website. I'm selecting my size. I'm selecting the color I want. No flash photos. Dinosaurs will attack phone case, which is pretty cool. Uh, Cambrian and Jurassic Park t-shirts. Actually, some of these Jurassic Park t-shirts I've never seen. They look pretty cool too. They're the very cool. On the boat. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the bar. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> Before we spend too much money, uh, Tom, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run my outro. Is there anything else you wanted to have a chat about? Um, no, just thank you for letting me join for this. It's been really cool actually going for a little park tour. <laughs> thank you for listening to this episode of Fossils and Fiction. We're always looking for more paleo stories to tell and welcome your suggestions through our social channels. You can also send voice notes via Spotify or social media. Podcast theme music is Sonora by Quincas Moraya via the YouTube audio library. Show notes are available on the website, fossilsfiction.co. Please subscribe and rate the podcast on your preferred podcasting platform.